As I gush over fresh hot beers, I have to remind myself, and y'all, to keep the context clear. Not that you're making a mistake, but to make sure that you're not hearing me say something that I don't mean for longer than it takes for the words to pass my mouth. Fresh hot beers are different. Yes, I appreciate them for their difference, but I do not, I do not think you can say they are empirically better. That said, I'm now going to drink Fresh is Best by Crux Brewing. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. I am now drinking my second Fresh Hop beer today. If you recognize the shirt from the previous video, number 184, the Ecliptic Brewing Fresh Hop collaboration. It is simply a few minutes later. I'm trying to get these knocked out. Hmm. So hopefully this time I'm not going to go into quite the preamble and... Uh, uh, random blatherings regarding uh, what fresh hops are and aren't, except to say that these hops are fresh. They were never kilned or cryo-preserved. They are within a day or two of harvest in the fields, added directly to the beer they are going to be used for the production of. And for that reason, think of the difference between a dried flower and a fresh flower, fresh, like, within minutes of being picked, right? That's the sort of thing we're looking at here. To the nose, there's a honeysuckle. I'm going to try hard to avoid comparing. Um, there are very different beers, that's for sure. These are using mostly Centennial hops, apparently, from Oregon, Silverton, Oregon. Hmm. Yeah, this has a lot less aroma to the nose. And here I go comparing right away. Apologies. There's possibly some like green beans or peas. Um honeysuckle. Um Yeah, it's interesting how how much less there is. Aroma-wise. Hmm. Let's see if I can get a swirl going here. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, that's a little better. Okay. Some very, very light citrus-esque aromas here going on. What do they say about it? So, these are the first fresh hops of the season from Goshi Farm. They have citrus flavors and soft pine notes. Okay. Yeah, so definitely lighter. Definitely lighter. Which is what you expect from a fresh hop. At the risk of repeating myself, because the flowers, because the, 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 the hop bine, the, the, the part that's used in the production of beer, is, is fresh, it's green, it is not bringing... Um, like the, the intensity of the flavor you get once you cry, once you kill or dry out those hops for preservation and shipment. Um, so the, the aromas tend to be lighter, more delicate, more nuanced, a little bit more verdant, but, but generally a lot lighter and, and more delicate. That's, that's the best way I can describe a fresh hop versus it's it's dried preserved ready for use later uh, version that's used in 99.99 percent of beers everywhere mm, yeah and now back to honeysuckle that's interesting I, I like that honeysuckle it's really a beautiful aroma it's just there's so much less of it let's see how it tastes Hmm. Interesting. Someone who's less, less a hop fan, um, 
would probably still consider this to be pretty bitter, but I find it to be very, very delicate to be, um, if, the, if they're citrus, it's a, it's like a, a mandarin, kind of a mandarin orange, you know, the small, super sweet cuties or, or angels or whatever they call them, um, on the store shelves. The sweetness is, is bordering on tropical, but not quite there. It's a very, very muted, very simple, very delicate sweetness. And then there's a, um, an interesting, almost a minty bite, a little bit at the beginning. But then to finish, it's, how to describe this? It's, th there's a greenness to it, but there's also a savory character. That's really interesting. But not, not like unpleasant savory, but like a, like a well-seasoned vegetable dish. A really delicious, well-seasoned dish that involved green vegetables. That kind of savoriness. Um, not, not mushrooms, but like garden vegetables. Uh, savory garden vegetables, not, not sweet ones like carrots or beets necessarily. Um, huh. Maybe like spaghetti squash? No, that's too far afield. Yeah. Okay, I like this one a lot. They are the two beers, the Ecliptic and this Crux could not be more different. And I think it's there, the hops that are used. This uses the Centennial, and the other used uh, three different hops, um, none of which were Centennial. And this one is a lot more of a, a lot simpler beer. There's a good deal less going on. But the flavors that are there are, are really well matched, really well balanced, and it's a nice little journey in your mouth from kind of the, the mandarin with a, a hint of mint down to um, this kind of vegetable dish, <laughs> for lack of a better word, um, with, with herbs uh, finish that's going on here. It's, it's really nice. Sometimes you might not think of an IPA as being a savoring beer. But both of these beers I've drunk today have been worth savoring. Like, the just the delicacy of the flavors and the aromas mean that they are worth the time it takes to, to allow them to bloom and develop in your mouth and through your nasal passages and then with your retro breathing, that's breathing out and tasting and smelling again the things that were down. Um, all of those are really, really beautiful. And in a, in a way that kind of, it wants you to slow down and appreciate them for what they are because they are very appreciable, able to be appreciated and worth appreciating. Yeah beautiful. I'm going to repeat myself when I say that if you are not an IPA fan, fresh hot beers that you can get in these maybe maybe as much as eight weeks from like early September to late October, the beers you can get, the IPAs that say fresh hop on the can and were made, were canned recently, this one canned on the 5th of September, are worth trying because they will show you a side of hops that you don't get in the other beers. And I wax passionate about this because, well, I'm passionate about it. <laughs> That's why, right? So if you're not an IPA fan, give, give a fresh hop beer a chance. See what it's like, right? If you go to a good bottle shop, you can probably even get just a single can. But I always recommend getting two at least. So you can have them in different experiences at different times. Maybe have one with a meal. Maybe have one by itself, right? 
your body's chemistry changes throughout the day. The way flavors impact you change from moment to moment. And that's a a really hard part about tasting. But it also, as long as you're aware of that, you can keep in mind the fact that something you might not appreciate in one context can be appreciated at another context. And particularly with Fresh Hop IPAs, with these beautiful, delicate, lighter flavors, you might find there's something in those flavors, the, the lower bitterness, but still that, that herbal, verdant, green growth, beautiful freshness that come through, through these fresh hops that you're able to appreciate and enjoy. enjoy. And then you'll be mad at me because you're not going to be able to get them for the rest of the year. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not. Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I have been waxing... I'm not going to say eloquent, I'm not going to claim that, but I have certainly been waxing. This is me drinking and enjoying Fresh is Best, the Fresh Hop IPA by the Crux Fermentation Project, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.